In this lecture, we'll discuss the effect of temperature on solid catalyzed reactions. So we've discussed previously that kinetic rate constants increase exponentially with temperature following the Arrhenius equation. So we can write that out, that our kinetic rate constant is equal to some pre-exponential factor A times E to the minus EA over RT, where this energetic term EA is our activation energy. So on a reaction coordinate diagram for some reaction, a goes to B. We can identify this activation energy. So let's say this is our energetic landscape with our stable reactant A here, our stable product B over here. The activation energy is the difference in energy between our stable reactant A and this transition state, call it A double dagger, which is the highest point in energy on our reaction coordinate diagram. But we've seen that for a solid catalyzed reaction, multiple steps are involved for this simple reaction, including adsorption and desorption. So we can draw an alternative reaction coordinate diagram for a solid catalyzed reaction. So this might look something like th this, where now we have adsorbed A here. Again, our activated transition state, A double dagger, and then our adsorbed product, B star here, before desorption from the catalyst surface. Consequently, for our solid catalyzed reaction, our rate becomes a function of activation energies and adsorption energies. We'll say that our rate is a function of rate constants and equilibrium constants, and so consequently will be a function of activation energies and heats of reaction or of adsorption. So since our equilibrium constant is also a strong function of temperature through the Van Hoff equation, so we could say that the adsorption equilibrium constant is going to be equal to e to the minus delta g of adsorption over rt. Of course, we can break this up into a temperature independent term. That'll be delta s of adsorption over r times e to the minus delta h of adsorption over rt. So we can write this as a prefactor k naught times e to the minus delta h of adsorption or the heat of adsorption over RT. So in fact, the equilibrium constant for adsorption will decrease with temperature as the kinetic rate constant increase. This is because the delta H of adsorption is always negative, and so coverage decreases with temperature. So it's not obvious what the temperature dependence of the overall rate will be. So let's consider for a simple example catalytic reaction, A goes to B, and assume that the surface reaction of A to B is irreversible and is our sole rate determining step. So we can write a sequence of elementary steps. So we have quasi-equilibrated adsorption of A, a unimolecular reaction on the surface to form adsorbed B, our product, and then quasi-equilibrated desorption of B from the catalyst surface. So we can write the overall rate as the rate of our rate determining step. So this will be a reaction rate constant, K2, times the coverage of A. So we can write the coverage of A from a competitive adsorption Langmuir isotherm using a site balance and the fact that the adsorption of A and the desorption of B are quasi-equilibrated. So if we do this, we can write that the overall rate is equal to the reaction rate constant K2 times the equilibrium constant for adsorption of A times the partial pressure of A divided by one plus K1 times the partial pressure of A plus partial pressure of B divided by the equilibrium constant K3. Now you will often see the equilibrium constant for K3 written as an adsorption equilibrium constant. So if we define the equilibrium constant for adsorption of B, Kb, as the rate constant for adsorption of B divided by the rate constant for desorption of B. So this would be K minus three divided by K3 this is, would be equal to the reciprocal of K3. So if it's defined this way, we can write the rate as simply K2 times the equilibrium constant for adsorption of A times its partial pressure divided by one plus the equilibrium constants for adsorption of A and B times their respective partial pressures. So let's consider what the temperature dependence of the rate would be first at low pressure of both A and B where the coverage of both species will be very low relative to the fraction of the surface that's vacant. 
So in this case, our rate will simplify to just our numerator, since the denominator will essentially just be one. So our overall weight rate will be the rate constant for conversion of adsorbed A to B times the equilibrium constant for adsorption of A times the partial pressure of A. So this reaction looks like a first order reaction in A with an apparent rate constant, K apparent equal to K2, the kinetic rate constant for the second step times the equilibrium constant for adsorption of A. So if we write the apparent rate constant in an Arrhenius type relationship, so we write that the for the apparent rate constant, the pre-exponential factor times e to the minus e apparent, so this is the apparent activation energy divided by RT, then we can express the right-hand side of this equation. So we'll have an exponential dependence on temperature, a similar Arrhenius expression for our reaction rate constant K2. This will be EA2 over RT. And then we'll also have an exponential dependence on temperature for our equilibrium constant for adsorption of A. So that'll be K naught times E to the minus delta H of adsorption of A over RT. So here we can see that the apparent activation energy we measure for this apparent rate constant, so this EA apparent, is going to be equal to the true activation energy for step two plus the enthalpy of adsorption of A. So since the enthalpy of adsorption is a negative value, the apparent activation energy will be lower than the true activation energy for step two. Going back to our reaction coordinate diagram, we can see this clearly. So here the apparent activation energy we measure is still the energy difference between our stable reactant in the gas phase and the highest point along our reaction coordinate and energy, the energy of that transition state. But we can also see that this is equal to the true activation energy for step two plus the heat of adsorption, which is negative, for our species A. So what happens at high pressures of A and low pressures of B where the surface is saturated by A? So in this case, our rate, again, is gonna be equal to the rate of the second step, which is equal to the reaction rate constant, K2, times the coverage of A. So here, if our surface is saturated by A, the coverage of A is essentially one. And so the rate is simply equal to K2. So in this case, the apparent activation energy that we measure is going to be the true activation energy for step two. So what if the opposite is true, where we have a high coverage of B and a low coverage of A? So our rate is still gonna be equal to the rate of step two, which is K2 times theta A. So here, if we rewrite our Langmuir isotherm expression, the denominator now is going to be dominated by the term associated with the coverage of B. So this is gonna be equal to the adsorption constant of B times its partial pressure. So this reaction is going to look like a first order reaction in A and a negative one order in B with an apparent rate constant equal to K2 times the adsorption equilibrium constant for A divided by the adsorption equilibrium constant for B. So our K apparent is going to be proportional to E to the minus EA2 plus delta H of adsorption of A minus delta H of adsorption of B, all over RT. So here, our apparent activation energy is equal to the true activation energy for step two, plus the enthalpy of adsorption of A minus the enthalpy of adsorption of B. So physically here, the apparent barrier height is increased by the energetic cost of removing B from the surface to free sites for adsorbing A. Finally, we can ask whether it would be possible to ever have a negative apparent activation energy. It is. So let's see how this works on a reaction coordinate diagram, again, for a simple reaction A goes to B. So here we can see that since the magnitude of the enthalpy of adsorption of A is larger than the true activation energy for going from adsorbed A to adsorbed B. The apparent activation energy measured, which again is the 
energy difference between our molecule in the gas phase and the energy of the transition state is negative. So what does this mean? It means that the rate will decrease as temperature is increased. So we're going back to our rate expression, the rate is equal to the reaction rate constant for step two times the coverage of A. This means that even though K2 here, the kinetic rate constant, is increasing with temperature, if coverage decreases faster than K2 increases, the overall rate decreases. So here we've seen how to analyze catalytic rate expressions to find apparent activation energies and how to use this information to rationalize rate changes with temperature.